Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, the Cougars head coach reflects on a 2-2 two and two start to the season and helps us set up BYU's trip to Toledo. Plus, tight end Matt Bushman joins us live in Studio C as BYU Football with Kalani Sitake starts now. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, hello once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo, Utah, for another edition of the Sitake Show, your weekly look inside a Cougar football hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter. Coming up on this evening's show, we'll ask you to use your hashtag, Sitake Show, to submit questions on Twitter for Kalani. You can also submit questions on Facebook and Instagram via the BYU TV Sports accounts. On this evening's broadcast, quite loaded, we'll recap the Washington game. We'll preview the matchup with the Toledo Rockets. We'll go inside the film room with tight ends coach Steve Clark. We'll explore some uh, pregame rituals with players and coaches. We'll get mic'd up with Micah Simon, and we'll chat with Matt Bushman in studio. But let us get tonight's show rolling. As a BYU player, he wore jersey number 34 this Saturday. As BYU's head coach, he will coach career game number 44. He's the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Sitake. Hey, How are you doing? It's you guys. All right. What's up? I'll give you one. What's up, Greg? How are you doing? You. Yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, I'm always worried this chair is going to break or something. Yet every week, yeah. it's rock solid. Someone's angry at the game and then just, you know, <laughs> sabotage this so I fall down. <laughs> Never going to happen. <laughs> so uh, good group here and good to see you again. And uh, just off the practice field, I guess, a few minutes ago. Yep, good practice and uh, looking forward to another week, you know, this after a disappointing outcome last week. And we're just disappointed at, at the way, uh, at the many mistakes we made and uh, just trying to get that fixed. So I have a gr group of great young men that want to work hard and, and uh, great coaches that want to work hard. So uh, should we should improve a lot from week four to week five. Two games, or rather four games in, two and two is BYU's record. Last game was that 45-19 uh, home loss uh, to Washington. And a little unusual compared to the games you've just been playing before because this one kind of got away from you in a hurry. Yeah, and then just way too many mistakes, and, and uh, that's, uh, you know, they're too good of a team to spot them that many opportunities and, and the turnovers. We had a punt return for a touchdown and, and a fumble return for a touchdown, so just way too many mistakes. It, it, it wasn't just really even one side or even one position. There were, there were a lot of missed assignments, and that's my job as head coach is to make sure that we play more consistent, and I'm looking forward to getting that done this week. Let's uh, roll briefly through our look back to uh, Saturday's matinee. It was a throwback game at uh, Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Uh, great uniforms, cool looks on the field, and uh, more than 62,000 fans in the stands. And uh, a heck of a nice play, by the way, to get the Huskies on the board. That's a, a toe tapper. They did review it. A good catch made, and the Huskies have their early uh, touchdown lead. And that's a heck of a good quarterback. They have two there. Uh, Jacob Eason came out of Georgia. Yeah, he threw the needle on that with that 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 tight pass. The other one, we didn't have anyone in coverage. And then uh, this was this obviously the fumble return for a touchdown. And, uh, you know, looking for an opportunity to go and score seven, and then you give up seven. It's a 14-point swing for us. Another look at what happened on that uh, particular play. And it's a really uh, just a... A man-on-man -man beat there on the right side. Yeah, and, break down uh, on our with our right guard and coverage, and then, yeah. if anything, you know, make the tackle or, or recover the ball. But uh, just a, not not a great outcome for us, and that that's not good. That we have six turnovers, and three of them have been touchdowns for the for the opponents. That's pretty unusual that a half of BYU's giveaways have gone the other way for scores. Emmanuel Asupa uh, gets his first touchdown as a BYU Cougar. Keep you guys in it, and then right before halftime. From 54 yards, second longest field goal in BYU football history. Jake Oldroyd makes it a 12-point game, so 24-12 at the break. And uh, again, you're back in the game, right? Yeah, being down 12, and we knew we could get the ball back, and um, you know, we just uh, had some some issues. I think we we, we uh, fumbled the ball in midfield and, and gave up a touchdown after that, and then this punt return. Uh, we had two guys, some two mental breakdowns on coverage, and. And this is the outcome. You can't make these type of mistakes and expect to beat a great team like Washington and, and uh, you know, with their depth and everything that they can do, their assignment sound on offense, defense, and special teams. And, and then uh, they just got after us. Once, once the uh, momentum started swinging, they just got after us and didn't really uh, let up until we uh, 
you know, until it's too late. We were able to get this turnover, but, um, you know, just the, I think the key is ball security, and we're fortunate here not to turn the ball over. Um, but I, I appreciate Max Tooley wanting to get in the end zone, but he's five yards away <laughs> from the reach, you know, and so it's, um, and I, he must think really highly of himself to get there, but I uh, just like the fact that he was able to get, make that play, and Austin Lee had a breakup on that one pick up, pick. And so, uh, you know, this was, we've kind of, Tennessee game, we gave one away, so this is kind of nice to get one in <laughs> get our Get one back the other time. way. Yeah. No scoring in the fourth quarter after all of that, and this game ended 45-19, Washington winning it. So the Huskies get BYU in back-to-back -to -back years. Uh, they got BYU in Seattle last year and then came here. And really, in both instances, uh, Coach Peterson, uh, you faced uh, two, really good, two really good Washington teams in back-to-back -back years. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, they, they, have a, they have a really good thing going on there in their program and their, their culture. So, you know, that's something that we, we admire and we want to get to that, that point. But uh, in order for us to even have a chance this game, we had to play assignment sound. And, and I thought the effort was great. We had high effort, but I didn't play the most sound and, and weren't really the, the, didn't play as smart as we should, should have been. Or as clean, right? The turnovers yeah, and, and the guys big guys just losses, trying too yeah. much. And you, you see the, some of the drop passes guys trying to run without the ball and things like that. that's pretty common but uh, it's not not common to see it from more of our veterans guys that have been through games before and and that's something that we have to keep keep uh, you know promoting to our players to get better and to just do their job do their 111th and it should be good enough so negative outcome but there were some positive performances we had the coordinators uh, pick their players from that game uh, those who excelled in their particular units and we see offense defense and a couple from special teams maybe you could talk about those guys uh, left or right Kalani. yeah Brady Christensen has been solid at the left tackle spot and he's gone against some great players there and uh, he's 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 going to be a big time tackle and, and has a great future uh, and and Max Tooley you know he 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 started to come along after the second game and he's starting to uh, have a presence on the field and I think he's going to be he's going to have a bright future we have a lot of young linebackers and they make a lot of plays and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the things that he's going to be able to do this week and then Skyler has been solid on his kickoffs and you know that we, we try to challenge them a little bit on to return some but they wouldn't do it and and uh, but he's been really pinpoint with his with his with his, with his kicks on kickoffs and uh, Trajan Peely did an amazing job at, at protecting the punter and and, and also in covering. So uh, those guys have been solid and uh, looking forward to seeing them produce more as we go through the next week. Okay, last week's uh, players of the game. Saturday's game saw Tyson Williams uh, leave the game with an injury in the second quarter. So he was certainly done for the day and then we found out later that he's uh, done for uh, the season. Uh, man, just a, a damaging loss for the team. A uh, sad situation for him personally. Just a rough deal and it happens at the start of what I think was gonna maybe a special season. Yeah, and you know he's he's um, trusted us and wanted to come out here. Came all the way out from from South Carolina to to be at BYU and to help our team. And and uh, you know we're still leaning on him to be a leader for us. And and he's really upbeat about it. You know, just wants to be there for the team. He's at practice again today and and in our meetings and everything. So he's waiting for uh, his surgery date in a, in a couple weeks. And um, I know that that uh, a lot of the thoughts and prayers that are going out to him from the fans, he really appreciates. And so. Appreciate all you guys reaching out to him. You know, this is something that he doesn't regret ever coming out here. And, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll see what happens with compliance and everything if you can get that year back. If not, he's part of our BYU family, and I know everyone will take good care of him. He's only been out here for a few months. What do you think has happened with, uh, with him and the program in terms of a relationship being formed in just a few months? Oh, the, the team was pretty emotional when they found out the, the, um, the outcome of his, in, you know, with, with his injury. And, uh, even though he hasn't been here uh, very long, it's just the connection that they've had together, and it's uh, it's how welcoming our players have been to, to the new guys, him and Soup, and others that have that come along as a freshman or JC transfers, and they, and uh, he's just really bought into the system, bought into the culture, and it really bought into what BYU is all about. That's something that he was really um, excited about in, in the recruiting process, that he can come to school where there's no distractions and just play football and go to and work on his masters, and that's something that he still values to this day he just he just it's just sad that he's not out there making plays but our guys will play and dedicate the season to him with Tyson out Emmanuel Osupa had a larger role uh, we saw him score that first touchdown as a Cougar uh, what kind of role would we expect for Soup moving forward can he be more of a workhorse guy or are you looking more of a, of a timeshare back there well, I think Soup Soup he can he can handle all of it you know he can be able to do, do what what Tyson's done but um, he was a little banged up coming out of camp 
And so that, that's why it took him a little while to get going. But he, between him and Lopini and Sione, they'll be able to figure it out. And, and we also have Jackson McChesney, that's a freshman return missionary. So um, I think the group is going to be fine. Um, you know, Tyson's still involved. And A.J. Stewart, I have a lot of confidence in him as, as the running backs coach to get our guys fed. Okay. That's the backfield situation for BYU. So the Cougars have played their final P5 of the regular season, uh, which segues into some, uh, some P5 news for BYU uh, involving BYU and Utah and their series and their rivalry. It's been extended for four more years, uh, going through the year 2028, but that will include uh, a new two-year hiatus. They've taken a break before for two regular seasons, and now, Kalani, there's another two-year break built in there uh, to allow Utah to put, it looks like, Florida on their schedule. Uh, just uh, thoughts on the deal that got done and the uh, shift in schedule here. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's an administration move, you know, so I, I know Tom has a great relationship with with Mark Harlan, their, their AD, and so they were able to work some things out, and uh, maybe we should get a bowl game that crosses over with the Pac-12 in those two years. So, well, uh, last just... time BYU <laughs> played Utah in a bowl game during yeah. the hiatus, so, so you know. be, it'd be, I mean, I, I'm just glad that we're able to keep, you know, the schedule that we have and the teams that we get to face, and uh, I'm really more focused on 2019 more than anything and focused on Toledo right now. But that's that's nice that, that they're able to work things together with, with the University of Utah and BYU administration. Okay, time out as we hit the break. A reminder that uh, for your day-to-day -day Cougar sports play-by-play, -play, you're to watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, tight ends coach Steve Clark discussing Matt Bushman's performance Saturday in the film room. And Kalani looks ahead to that weekend trip to Toledo. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork. For BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Call it a path. Or a way through. It can be arrow straight, or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV, to a range of pickups including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. BYU football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. BYU's only other meeting with Toledo was in 2016 in a game that featured that 286-yard five-touchdown 